Hi, welcome to Mailbag Monday. Yes, look at it, inundated still. Yeah, sorry, I can't do it every week. Sometimes I've been a bit busy lately. And for those following me on Twitter, just a little update, uh, which those who follow me will already know, but uh, that GoPro Hero 4, that brand spanking new one I just got and did a teardown of it, I lost it yesterday in Fortress Canyon. It is currently sitting at the bottom of a pool. Oh! slipped straight off the helmet. No, they don't float. Anyway, mailbag Monday, here we go. Oh goodness, I don't know where to start. Anyway, let's go. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. First up, one from my former company. Yes, Altium, who I used to work for, everyone knows that, from the operations department. They're still in uh, Carlsbad in uh, California. I've been to the, of the Altium office in uh, Carlsbad, and uh, they're obviously still there. What have they sent me? It is... Circuit Maker Paraphernalia. Why Circuit Maker? Oh, there's a board in there. Oh, there's a board in there. Oh, there's a board in there. Why, I need three? I got no idea. And they sent me a t-shirt. Oh, white balance. Oh yeah, I've got auto white balance on the camera. You can really see it come in and out there. Um, circuit maker, ta-da! That's a new circuit maker symbol. We've got circuit maker on the back. Made in Tanzania. It's a nice sport tech uh, material. Unfortunately, it's large. I prefer my shirt small or medium. Please, if you are going to send me a shirt. So thank you very much for the shirt. Out him, they're trying to plug their new circuit maker program. For those who haven't heard, geez, you must be living under a rock. Uh, they formally announced this at the Maker Fair. It's their new low-cost uh, maker slash hobbyist version. Um, it's not out him designer. It is a new uh, program completely called Circuit Maker. No, nothing to do with the previous Circuit Maker 2000, which was actually a nice little program before they canned it. Jeez. Anyway, uh, well, I can understand not wanting to support two separate programs, but jeez. Anyway, let's not go there. Um, yes, uh, unfortunately, they've screwed it up because it's cloud only. I know there's a lot of people out there who won't care and go, eh, you know, I'll give it a go anyway. And you probably should give it a go. It's worth giving a go anyway. That's Apart from that, it does look pretty darn good. So I haven't actually played with it myself. I have done a video conference of it, actually playing around with it. Um, but uh, yeah, yet to actually get a downloadable version myself. So anyway, Circuit Maker, check it out. And they've included a Ta -da, little prototype board. This is really bad video blogging here because I'm just holding crap up to the camera which is not the right way to do it, but I am defocused. Look at that. My lovely lens on the Sony here. Beautiful. Anyway, that's a little Arduino thing, and they've sent me three. Awesome. They might come in handy. A little proto shield for Arduino. Terrific. Anyway, Circuit Maker, link down below. Check it out. Or oh, for those who like to scan things, there you go. Anyway, Altium are actually looking for beta testers for this thing. It's not actually released yet, and they're looking for feedback from the community. And of course, the biggest feedback they're going to hear is about it being cloud only. Pain in the ass. Grrr. Anyway, you can work offline somehow. I don't know, but they're looking for feedback. So please get on the beta program and give it to them. Because really, that cloud only aspect of it is going to make or break the product, I think. And well, yeah, odds are it'll probably break it. Next up, this one has been hanging around for a while. Sorry, John from uh, International Test Equipment Corporation. Fantastic name, beauty. So, hey, guess what's in here from International Test Equipment Corporation? Let's have a look. And by the way, this one, I know what's in here. So, well, um, yeah, I do. Uh, so I know it's actually going to require a lot more than just what I can do in the mailbag here. And I, yes, I did get complaints last time in the last mailbag that uh, it's one of these Tevec envelopes, hard to tear. <sighs> Impossible to tear Tevec envelopes. Unbelievable. Cannot. Fair income. Like if you get your knife in there, then obviously once you've got that rip, tear it apart. But bloody Tevec envelopes. Awesome. Um, Anyway, John, let's see what John sent. It is a USB 2.0 protocol analyzer. Anyway, I was 
got sidetracked there, I was about to say that yes, there was a lot of feedback last time about how I spent too much time on the FLIR thermal imaging camera and it was like a mini review, and yeah, it turned into it. I didn't expect it to be that, but you know, yeah, I just like to talk. And it ended up being like, I don't know, 12 or 15 minutes of bloody thermal imaging camera, and people said they just want to see me open mail on here, and I'm doing it again. I'm talking too much. So let's take a look at the USB protocol analyzer so I won't make the same mistake with this and spend 10 15 minutes talking about it so if you want to see a separate video then you can do a separate video and i'll just open the mail got a letter from john oh goodness now i feel really bad sorry john um i completely forgot that this thing was a kickstarter and as it so happens it finished three days ago and i've had this for ages and it's just by you know random chance it didn't make it into the previous mailbags and unfortunately he didn't meet his target and oh, oh, oh. anyway if you are going to send me something in for a kickstarter uh yeah big red pen on the outside you know must be opened by blah date or something like that and hopefully that'll visually remind me because i'm hopeless i get far too many emails and things sorry john um anyway please find and close usb 2.0 uh logic analyze this test instrument was developed uh in 2005 2008 and since sold 800 units worldwide awesome couple in aussie land too as you may be aware currently doing a kickstarter campaign at raising funds need to improve the design the fpga's um hdl and pc software to a new advanced b model Awesome. I'm doing all my work myself, so I'm dearly in need of some publicity and community funding. Well, hopefully you can I don't know, run it again, perhaps. Or Anyway, it was an ambitious target. It was like a hundred and uh, something thousand dollars, so it was quite ambitious. Um, a review of the unit and the Kickstarter campaign can make it in Teardown Tuesday. Oh, well, Teardown. Hmm, I want to do a Teardown of it. Maybe we can do a quick Teardown here because I've already got something in line for Teardown Tuesday tomorrow. Or will people complain that I should do it for a separate Teardown Tuesday? Oh, goodness. I think I have to go down and sit down, think about it. Hmm. And here it is in an extruded aluminium case. Look at that. Uh, USB uh, protocol analyzer model 1480A. And you can buy this, by the way. So it's not like it's uh, uh, a Kickstarter or bust. The Kickstarter was to develop the Model B uh, upgraded uh, firmware and stuff. But you can still buy the Model A, which I'll link in down below. And uh, I wouldn't have put copyright 2008 on the front. I, I don't really like that. But anyway, um, nice simplistic interface. Link under test. There we go. In and out. And a uh, couple of LEDs. And not much else on the back apart from made in the United States of America, USA, 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 to analysis computer. Awesome. And designed to comply with the FCC rules. Let's do a new segment called Two Minute Teardown. And we're in like Flynn. Error all that is. And check it out. Look at this. Nice little surprising uh, PCI interface down here. I like this. We've got the exposed uh, solder mask along the uh, sides here, edges, so that it makes excellent RFI contact to, through to the aluminium case. Nice. This looks like it's some sort of debugging, uh, you know, a development header here, and as you'd expect, there's not a huge amount on here. There's an Altera Cyclo 2, it's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out, but uh, yeah, not much at else. And we've got ourselves a Cyclone 2 in here, a fairly older uh, model, but hey, it was designed a fair bit back. But hey, USB 2.0 doesn't go out of style, really, so if the protocol analyzer worked back then, it's going to work now. So more than good enough, of course, that's all you need for something like this. You need an FPGA and you need the uh, smarts to go in it. That's basically it. Wax some memory on. We've got some nice little light pipe there to go up. Very nice. That might have been an off-the-shelf one. I doubt uh, John would have done a uh, custom one for this uh, sort of thing, this sort of volume. You can actually buy just, um, you know, off-the-shelf uh, ones like this through your usual suppliers. No surprises for finding one of these uh, Cypress Easy USB uh, microcontroller chips down in here. Exactly what you'd expect in this sort of application. So this does all the uh, USB um, interface uh, stuff through to your PC and, of course, all your real-time uh, serial protocol decoding for your USB all done inside your FPGA. And some memory on the back there and Bob's your uncle, pretty much. So there you go. It's all about the software.
So thanks, John. This might come in handy for a uh, future video if I have to do USB uh, protocol analyzing and stuff like that. And if you want to get one of these puppies, the uh, the current Rev A here is available. And hold on to your hat, folks. It's not cheap. It is 695 bucks. But of course, you know, the hardware is not worth that. It's not in the hardware. It's in the professional protocol uh, decoding software and the firmware and intelligence that goes inside this thing and the software does look pretty professional and comprehensive so anyway if you're in the market for a like a pro level uh, protocol analyzer check it out links down below oh, by the way the little blurb tells you exactly what it does a protocol view that organizes the data fully hierarchically exactly as it appears in the bus under test multiple time correlated views of the captured data decoding display of bus events down to the lowest d plus D minus differential bus states and much more. Please see the tutorial on their website for more details. Up next, completely random one from Arian Hudson, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's from Auckland West in, well, New Zealand. I guess west of Auckland. Um, it, electronics, that's all it says. I like the uh, uh, tape on this thing. And, well, let's check it out. It's about the size and it's pretty hefty. It's about the size and weight of like a hard drive or something like that. Um, was sort of like my initial uh, thought of what it could be. Ah, it's well padded. He's uh, put all local New Zealand stuff in there. No, hey, oh, you know I like multimeters. Woohoo! What is this? That's a pretty right. Oh, it's a Sanwa. Excellent. Another two-minute teardown. What do you think? Hi Dave, found this lying around home, thought you might like it, it's quite vintage gear, it certainly is, um, he's never heard of Samwa before, um, well, it's, he's got it from his dad's tool chest, awesome, uh, looking for teardowns, anyway, it's going to be a two minute teardown, thank you very much Adson, you say it, ah, oh, uh, Ari Jin, Ari Jin, I still can't do it, <sighs> thank you Bob. Anyway, look at that. Beautiful. As I said, it's pretty hefty. Senwa are a uh, top Japanese brand of, uh, well, back in the day, analog multimeters, and now they still do uh, digitals. And uh, there we go. Has that got a model number on it? Yeah, SP60. There we go. Made in Japan. Yep, of course. And uh, they, uh, they still are. I'm pretty darn sure. Or Senwa gear is uh, made in Japan. And there you go, not a huge amount of ranges on the thing. In fact, the lowest is 10 volts. Jeez, that's a bit how you're doing. Um, times one, you know, a three range uh, ohmmeter and uh, AC volts as well, up to 1,000 volts. Um, single set of uh, jacks here, for, and it does uh, current as well. So, yeah, not a particularly, uh, you know, high-end model with lots of ranges and stuff like that. But, yeah, this would be like maybe early... Out uh, of 70s vintage would be my guess. I'd have to uh, get my old Electronics Australia magazines and take a look. And there you go, two minute teardown. That's all you expect inside one of these things. We've got our uh, taut band movement here. We just have a whole bunch of uh, resistors around here and there's not much else in an analog meter. We've got the zero ohms are just down in here. That'll only be uh, a low value resistance here. This is where uh, he repaired it down here and uh, yeah, <laughs> they're pretty simple if you've ever seen the schematic for one of these. One of the interesting things to note is the battery, check this out, you have to actually screw it in. Look, it's got an outer jacket here where you slide the cell in, eliminates indication error when a ferrous jacket cell is used. What the? Anyway, it's got a screw on the end which you undo, a little grub screw, and that pulls the battery out. And there's the terminal, and you can just slide the battery out like that. That is weird. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a AA battery holder like that. That is remarkable. So that is really convoluted. You just got the loose end like that sits in there, and you put pressure on there, not too much, <laughs> and uh, I'll just sell in place. Bizarre. And check that out, Sanwa branded resistors, awesome. Anyway, that does have a really good ball bearing wiper on that. Look at that rotary switch, ah, oh, beautiful. Still works like, you know, it's still as good as new 40 years later. Fantastic. 
Anyway, this thing is built like the proverbial brick dunny, even with the back case off. I can't move that suck, bend that sucker at all. It's just beautiful. Oh, thank you very much, Arian. And there's the jack. Yes, it's got the old two millimeter one that you saw back in the day. And I have seen that style before, but uh, it's quite rare. And of course it still works and it's pretty close to bang on. Look at that. There's no mirrored uh, scale in there to prevent parallax error, but yeah, that's about as close as bang on as you'll get with an analog meter like this. Beauty. And here's another one I've neglected for quite some time. It comes from Trevor uh, Johansson, or Johansson, however you want to pronounce it, from Canada. Hi to all my Canadian viewers, and this one's, yeah, been sitting around for a while. Sorry. It's got, well, I won't tell you what's in here, but it's a pretty generic uh, title of what's actually in here. So... Let's have a look. That was a bit awkward, sort of a bit, bit unwieldy, the old uh, Dundee knife. Here we go. But the good thing is, is that we can just slice through like that. And anyway, here it comes. It's wrapped for our protection. That's it. Yeah, no, we don't have a note. I don't think so. Oh, there might be. Anyway. Ah, yeah, we do. Woo! It's some weird ass development board. Hmm. Let's look what Trev sent in. This board was pulled from a checkpoint security gate from an electronic surplus store. I was not expecting much in the way of hardware. When he popped it open, there was quite a bit of pricey hardware. Blackfin uh, FPGA board make it look like the whole board was designed around a dev kit. Interesting. Bit of poking around with the uh, Ethernet to see what appears to be a Lotus database connection. I have no idea what a Lotus, you know, like a Lotus... Um, 123 is when I think of Lotus. Uh, anyway, uh, Lotus database connection and pictures are not very user friendly, uh, so I figure you might want to poke around. Well, let's have another, geez, we're on a roll here, two minute teardown. Let me know if you like two minute teardown. This could require a bit more than two minutes though. <laughs> Actually, it's not that old. We're only talking, uh, you know, five years. It's uh, not much at all. And uh, yeah, Ethernet, check that out. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to go power the thing up, of course, but anyway, let's whip the uh, can off. But if you have a look at all this, uh, got some, one of these, uh, you know, differential lines, or I don't know, something. Uh, so anyway, some sort of security, uh, what is it, checkpoint uh, security gate. So yeah, it could be using like RS, you know, 485 or, uh, or something like that to connect all sorts of stuff. But it's, yeah, it's pretty custom. Aha, uh -huh, I see what he means now. Yes, they've just sort of like used an off-the-shelf board. Looks like it may be a, yeah, board to board. Well, it's, yeah, okay, it's just got some headers. Yeah, it looks like some sort of, uh, uh, you know, dev board or off-the-shelf. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, Blackfin DSP. So maybe some sort of off-the-shelf board. It doesn't look like it'd be maybe designed as such so they could have designed around that and that's not uncommon if you're like a subcontracting uh, company or something and you get the brief to design we want our checkpoint security gate please design it for us and we want it yesterday well how do you do it you're not going to dick around uh, developing your own processor solution and everything else and the, everything to go along with that no you're just going to use an off-the-shelf thing because they probably only manufacture these in the hundreds or something like that so very common just to use off-the-shelf uh, you know uh, dev and um, industrial PC uh, boards like this like th this is not like a, a standard form factor it's not like a you know a PC 104 or one of the other uh, form factors readily available that I'm aware of anyway I haven't seen anything like it but it's got a Xilinx Spartan and as he said the Blackfin uh, DSP on it and some memory so it does certainly look like an off-the-shelf board Let's see if I can get a part number on that actually and I just spent a minute or two of my uh, two-minute teardown talking out my ass because it is custom. 2000 at Copyright 2007 Checkpoint Systems Inc. It's their Evolve controller. Go figure. Anyway, eh, what I said was still valid. It's just not valid in this case. So what do we got? We've got a couple of transformers here. These ones are nude. and uh, But they go up to these. Yeah, it's got uh, TX1 and TX2 labelled up there. So... Uh, yeah, we've got some maybe 
some local regulation happening around there and some more interface uh, stuff another transformer there and it's all totally custom for their specific uh, you know security gate application we've got all some power stuff happening around here well and yeah, it's just miscellaneous interface um, stuff it looks like maybe another maybe some isolators uh, there as well whole bunch of uh, passive protection and stuff like that happening around here we've got ourselves a current shunt resistor might be measuring some current well that's what current shunt resistors do anyway another transformer that's a bit how you're doing here that's why a bit uh, strange anyway we've got ourselves a couple of inductors a whole bunch of relays for output switching that might turn on the security gate you know you swipe your card or something it could hook up to a card reader up here something like that and uh, just activate a relay which then turns on your motor to you know open your gate or uh, maybe they got some you know some security intercom uh, stuff as well as you uh, enter you know a, a security gate you know they usually have one of those in intercom things so there you go that's um a look at hey there's nothing on the back of course um interesting four big pads there what oh okay right they're just uh, uh some heat sinking for the uh d packs down in there no worries but uh that's an interesting look at a you know a custom solution for you know a specific niche application in this case a checkpoint security gate huh awesome thanks trev Actually, when he talked about that Lotus database connection, when he uh, had a play around with the Ethernet, that probably makes sense with what I just said about the, uh, you know, the swipe card interface or something like that. One of those uh, Wigan cards or, you know, like you swipe your card when, before you go in the gate. All that stuff is logged usually. So it wouldn't surprise me if it logged it to a, a PC database over the Ethernet here. Um, yeah, that would make uh, complete sense. So it tracks the uh, time and date, of course. There's a huge battery uh, backup on the back there. So it's got a real-time clock. It can track the time and date of the entry and also, you know, everyone's car to be programmed in there. You know, do you have access? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, we just sacked you yesterday. We cancelled your card. Please clear the contents of your desk, sir, and we'll escort you out. And please hand over your security card. You are no longer valid. Don't let the security gate hit your ass on the way out. Thank you for your valuable service. And yes, we have one from Australia. Beauty. Yes, it's not Australia. Australia. No worries. And this one is from uh, B.S. Moore. He's from Minto. Ah, oh, g'day to all my viewers in Minto. Are uh, there a lot in Minto? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Minto's here in uh, this. Oh, that, no, it just, no, I don't, it doesn't really work. Some, sometimes the knife is just, yep, does not do the business. Anyway, uh, did, I measured this at 13.1 <clears throat> mega ohms. Oh, right. Woo, we have some components. A resistor, maybe a precision resistor. Could be. Aha, uh -huh, I remember Bazza. Yes, we met at the Electronics Expo. It was a real buzz meeting you. Awesome. And likewise. And thank you to everyone who turned up to the Electronics uh, Expo to meet me on the stand. I was uh, talking to Bazza for a while, and I don't know, there were probably some other people standing line waiting. Jeez, that guy's talking to me a long time. Why doesn't he get out of the way? I want to meet Dave. Anyway, it's awesome. I love talking to people. And yes, he, um, uh, bought a microcurrent and he told me that he tried to calibrate it what he thought was an 11 meg resistor but was in fact 13 meg so my microcurrent was spot on anyway uh high, yes high value r's are often out of spec they're usually quite unless you pay uh top dollar for them yeah they're usually you know that plus minus 10 or 20 percent uh figure so yep way out and yes he did promise he would send in uh some 10 gig and uh, 20 gig resistors fantastic yes 10,000 meg awesome um to go with the 200 yes he gave me some resistors i've got them here somewhere let me get them and check this out yes it's a whirlwind uh, well not really precision but high value uh wound resistor in glass tube with handwritten uh whirlwind brand on it 200 meg 10 percent 
check that out and that dates from uh from 1975 and check this out he found the original card uh, for this thing it's got its own individual serial number that's what that da there is for i was wondering about that da 354 it's actually the serial number and it's 1975 look at that fantastic 100 volt rated 200 meg nominal resistor <laughs> well one oh goodness and here's a couple of more resistors as well. And these ones are monsters. Here's the new micro ruler for comparison. 100 millimeters long. And yes, look at this fantastic micro ruler. It's the brand new one, which if you, you know, came to meet me at the electronics show, you would have got one. Oh, look, it's even got a lead forming tool on the end. And extra stuff on the other side. Mmm, how good does that smell? Should I do another campaign for it? Let me know. Anyway, these look like to be Co Cobra brand. Never heard of them, but that is a 10 gig 5% wire wound resistor. Very nice. And this one here is 20 gig. Excellent. So this one I had here was 100 volts rated. This one doesn't, these ones don't have any rating at all. And the lowest voltage we can go down to here on our um, mega is 500 volts so oh, fingers crossed this could end badly for the resistor anyway let's test it come on you can do it you can do it spot on 10 gig beauty and this monster over here is supposed to be 20 gig so let's test that it always takes a while to uh, charge up these things and especially if you're measuring uh, the resistance the insulation resistance are like very long cables they've got a lot of capacitance and stuff like that man it can take forever anyway come on come on you can do it no it doesn't like that at all overload so yeah but we got up to around about that 10 20 gig ohm level so close what's going on one more time for the dummies charging up you can do it no no still not a happy camper why doesn't it like that one the other one worked fine well i suspect what's happening there is that uh well it's just not rated for that voltage and it's arcing over inside and that's causing overload and the meter just goes Meh, can't do it and well the other one maybe just scraped in by sheer luck perhaps because they look you know um to be very similarly rated in that respect but yeah we might be you know on the ballpark because like this one here like it says 100 volts but you know you put 101 on it and it's not going to die right it's you know it's it's like a conservative kind of rating so anyway that's a very interesting look at these uh, high value resistors and you can get much bigger ones these days you can get them in surface mount ones and then you've got huge problems with uh, contamination on your PCB and stuff like that um, you know so all sorts of precision analog applications it's not un uncommon to have one of these high value precision resistors and they don't even have to be precision but just high value on the input you know in the order of gig ohms hundreds of gig ohms that kind of stuff and you can get them and yeah they're not that accurate and yep uh you know contamination on your board or anything like that big problem but interesting these big wire wound ones what a monster thanks Baza. it's not often we get one from budapest awesome from uh boros marcel so uh yeah hungry so hi to all my hungarian viewers awesome and it's just uh wrapped it's dead wrapped in plastic for those who remember the show, not that I ever really watched it, but it was kind of, you know, catchphrasey kind of thing back in the day. So, let's have a look. Let's see what uh, Marcel has sent. Oh, Boros. Come on, you can do it. Jeez, it's wrapped good, all right. What do we have? It's a complete mystery. Looks like a couple of rolls of solder. <laughs> it's 
So that's rather weird. Maybe it's something else. No? Yeah? We've got a little bit of solder and looks like a springy kind of metal roll of metal. Jeez, I don't know. What's going on here? What do you sent, Boris? How many layers have we got? He went to town on this. I'm sure he's just like laughing at home now. <laughs> you Dave. Yeah. And you want to take him forever to open it and frustrate the hell out of him. And, yep. I think we have a, some sort of board or something like that. This is like, I'm just, like, I can just rip right through it, but I don't want to damage anything. If it was fragile. I think I just bent it. Goodness, we're almost there, folks. And in the end, it's something flexible. Or maybe it's probably not designed to bend, but it looks very thin. Is this the longest opening ever? Yeah, I broke it. It's a solar cell, and it's just shattered all over my bench. Um, oops. Um, sorry, Boris. Yeah, um, yep. Wah, 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 wah. That had no hope. Uh, Notice. Very fragile! Exclamation mark! Please be careful during unboxing. Very, very careful! And it's Marcel, uh, not Boris. He had the, yeah, the last name first thing on the letter. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, Marcel. I screwed the pooch big time. Here we go. He likes my mailbag. Decided to send you uh, probably the post the most fragile thing in the world. Yes, um, a solar cell. It's a Chinese uh, one. It puts out about 4.18 watts. That's pretty precise. Can produce 4.186 watts with 0.6 volts. 17.2% efficiency. Uh, yeah, okay. Flux coated connecting and industrial soldering wire, which is now pointless because, yeah, I shattered the solar cell um it was it's got to be me right it's yeah me just brutalizing that package and unfortunately um i didn't see the letter in here from marcel um when i was opening it so yeah fail anyway there's a solar cell i've got to be very careful um you can get very sharp bits on these and uh, they can be real nasty so unfortunately that's going to have to go straight in the bin. I don't want to touch that one at all. Anyway, there it is. And yes, it is incredibly, incredibly thin. And, uh, yep, I, I don't know. You know, you'd need a microscope to go uh, have a look at uh, things. But, yeah, you're not going to see much. It's a solar cell. Thank you very much, Marcel. Unfortunately, I can't do any experiments with it because it's dead. Although we could use like a partial part of it, but like I said, these can be, I think they can be real nasty um, when they uh, shatter like this, so probably don't want to go handling them. It's interesting on the back of it, you can see the strip there behind that. Fascinating. Well, this one could be a first. It's from Mauritius. It's from uh, Ajma El Ganti. Um, and he's from Boobasson in Mauritius. Have we had one from Mauritius from before? I don't know. Hi to all my Mauritian viewers. Is that a is that the correct uh, term for residents of uh, Mauritius? I don't know. Let's see what he sent. We have a lovely note. Let me read. I've been watching your YouTube videos for quite a while now. I can say you've inspired me throughout my engineering course. Currently in uh, year two of electrical and electronics engineering at Swinbourne. 
Oh, okay, University of Technology. Um, he's learned quite a bit. On holidays from my home country is coming to an end soon. I thought it'd be nice to send you something from home. Since I hear I, using the term dead as a dodo expression, I thought to myself wouldn't entirely love that key holder with a small dodo on it. Awesome. Uh, Edgemal, Ganti, thank you very much. Edgemal, it's probably not going to require me switching to the other camera, but uh, he sent me a... This little souvenir from Mauritius. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Souvenir La Mauritius. It's a key holder from Mauritius. Awesome. And yes, I now have some sand from Mauritius. Thank you very much, Arjmal. Excellent. Nice little turtle there. And a dodo. Dead as a dodo. And this could be a third, or maybe even fourth, suck of the salve. I'm not sure, but this is from uh, uh, Geppetto Electronics. I think I just got it correct then. I think it is... Uh... Anyway, let's crack it open. So we've seen stuff on here before. Hey, it's Nick again. Uh, this is just a gift for having my stuff on your mailbag. There you go. It's a gift for having things on my mailbag. Well, I opened this on my mailbag too. Thank you very much. What do we got? Aha! Neat. It is. Isn't this cute? Hang on. Let me let me take it off before I show you. Little protection plate. Awesome. It is an EV blog clock. That's going straight to the pool room. Good on you, Nick. What's so interesting about a clock, I hear you ask? Well, he doesn't say, but have a look on the back. This has been modified. Hmm, purple PCB there. Yep, um, yeah, we have a custom job. What's it gonna do when we switch it on? Is it gonna go backwards or be erratic or do some sort of weird thing like that. Get the battery in the right way. That'd be uh, embarrassing. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Yep. It's got some weird convoluted thing happening in two steps. Is that like counting up in binary or something? Well, it certainly seems to be uh, keeping time. I just timed it and did take 30 seconds to get from there to there. But it just seems a little bit uh, erratic, that's all. So, hmm, interesting. I'm going to have to see what it does over the long term. All right, I think this might have to be lucky last. I'm not sure how long this mailbag's been going for. People will complain. Probably not long enough. Anyway, another one from Australia. Um, it's got no name on it, so uh, I have no idea. It's... Don't want to break it. I did last time. Um, all right, here we go. So thank you, anonymous person from Australia. Let's have a gander at what's in here, shall we? Everyone's just waiting for me to, you know, to stab myself with this thing. It's not going to happen. I'm a professional. Oh, hello. I don't know. Whatever it is, it comes in a nice little case. Hmm. This could be a separate teardown item. Let's have a look at the note. That crazy Aussie bloke. It's from Rob. Thanks, Rob. Uh, thanks for all the videos. As a teenager, I quite enjoyed electronics. Spent a fair bit of time building headphone amps. Didn't everyone? Uh, mid-20... As a mid-20s, my day job had nothing to do with engineering. It kept me super busy. Used my videos as a way to con continue your uh, interest in the... Hobby, awesome, thank you. <gasps> he sent an old ECG machine that I picked up cheap from eBay. Bought it because I thought it was cool. I'm about to move overseas. I'll send you a postcard. Need to do something with it. Might make a good teardown. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. Let's, oh yeah, look. Yeah, there we go. Cardio line E1. It, interesting. Check that out. There we go. Made in Italy. It's Italian. Fantastic, it is uh, 240 volts from uh, Remco Italiana. Remco Italiana, there we go. So, and it's got a, yeah, a little uh, chart. Sorry if you didn't see that before. It's 
got a little chart uh, output there, so it'll have a little pen plotter or a little. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little. Right, yeah, it'll have a little. Uh, yeah, so it's probably a thermal thing, is it? I don't know. Anyway, um, that's interesting. So, yeah, that could be a separate teardown. Are there any probes in here? Most likely. Yep, we've got the power cord. Jeez, we've got. Oi! Crusty! Crusty! Look at that! Wow! That is. Don't know you can see the corrosion on that. Wow! <laughs> That's really something. <laughs> oh, goodness! And a big strap. What are you strapping? Oh! Oh, yeah, it's got that vintage smell, alright, but it doesn't look that old. I mean, uh, yeah, interesting. Anyway, that's probably more than a two-minute teardown. Thanks, Rob. Oh, uh, well, just for kicks, let's just power it up. Look, uh, Rob's actually uh, bodged a uh, lead here because it, it comes with a... that thing, like that, and uh, a separate um, ground connection. So, there you go. Let's whack that in and uh, turn it on, see what it does. We got a light, AC, come on, auto, because it's detecting uh, nothing on the uh, probes, I'm guessing, that it's not going to do anything. Aww. Aww. Aww, what a bummer of a way to end mailbag. Catch you next time.